In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And so begins the first passage of the Hebrew Bible. No book in history has been more read. No book in history has been more translated. And no book in history has been more analyzed than the Hebrew Bible. But do we really know what is contained in this ancient document? Here we have the first passage of Genesis text written in the square or block Hebrew letter style used by scribes to write sacred scrolls for over 2,000 years. When was this passage written and who wrote it? Was it revealed by God to Moses on Mount Sinai? Or was it written by priests and scholars during the early Second Temple period? Over the next hour, we will investigate these questions. But more important, we will explore an ancient mystical tradition that claims that the secrets of creation are contained within this beginning passage of the Hebrew Bible. We will introduce an ancient mystical text, the Sapiot Sira, whose cryptic passages have remained a mystery for over 1500 years. The Sapiot Sira, which is the Hebrew title for the Book of Formation or Book of Creation, will be viewed in a whole new light as we will demonstrate how this book provides the clues to interpret the secrets of the Hebrew letters and reveal the hidden mathematical structure embedded in the first passage of the Hebrew Genesis text. The first passage of the Genesis text is here translated into English. The passage is a poetic description of the first day of creation. But reading the passage reveals little evidence of hidden wisdom or mystical secrets of creation. And as evocative as the poetry might be, any resemblance to a scientific theory of creation will be superficial at best. If there is any possibility at all of finding any meaningful scientific content, it will be necessary to examine the original text. We propose that the first passage of Genesis text, here presented on the bottom of the slide, is a type of cryptogram. A cryptogram is a body of text that contains encrypted information. But unlike standard cryptograms, the body of the text in this case superficially looks like a conventional piece of prose with no evidence of encoded information. The message is hidden or embedded inside this block of conventional text, and therefore it is technically described as a steganographic text or stega text. The word steganography comes from the root stegos, which means hidden or roof. Extracting the embedded message will require the application of a decoding key, which will translate the prosaic but encrypted ciphertext into its deciphered or decoded plain text. The Sapiot Sira is the manual that provides the instructions to accomplish this procedure. Many books have been written about the mystical properties of the Hebrew letters such as Matityahu Glazeson's Letters of Fire and Rabbi Michael Monk's Wisdom of the Hebrew Alphabet. On the bottom of this slide, we see a quote from Rabbi Aryeh Kaplan, whose brilliant commentary on the Sapiot Sira provide much of the groundwork for the theory that I propose in this presentation. The Hebrew letters, he states, are called the foundation letters by the Sapiot Sira because it was through the letters of the Hebrew alphabet that the universe was created. But what exactly did these letters look like? And how does one get a universe from an alphabet? According to the rabbinic tradition, the Hebrew letters of the original Ten Commandment tablets and the letters of the original Torah scrolls scribed by Moses were written in divinely revealed letters. But the precise form of these letters are no longer known. These letters, according to the rabbinic tradition, are believed to be similar in form to the modern Hebrew letters illustrated on the bottom half of this slide and not the much older Paleo-Hebrew letters used during the first temple period and illustrated on the top of this slide. The Paleo-Hebrew script, which evolved from the even older Phoenician and Proto-Canaanite writing, was used during the first temple period but abandoned after the destruction of the first temple in 586 BC. 
During the Babylonian exile that followed, the Jewish people adopted the Neo-Assyrian writing of the Babylonian Empire. And it is this script that they continued to use when they returned to the land of Israel after the Persian Empire rose to power in 539 BC. After the Greek armies of Alexander the Great conquered the Persian Empire in 331 BC, the Neo-Assyrian letters that comprise the Imperial Aramaic script of the Persian Empire were replaced by writing of a more distinctive nationalistic Jewish style. And it is this script that ultimately evolved into the modern Hebrew letters that are used today in common usage as well as in sacred Torah scrolls. The Samaritans of northern Israel who remained behind during the Babylonian exile insisted that it was the Paleo-Hebrew script that was revealed to Moses. And to this day the small remaining populations of Samaritans living in Israel and Syria continue to write their Torah scrolls in Paleo-Hebrew script. In contrast to the claim of the Samaritans, the political and rabbinic leadership of the late Second Temple period claimed that the Jewish letters of that period were originally revealed to Moses, lost, and then revealed again to Ezra the scribe, and that these Jewish letters were in fact the original letters of divine revelation that predated the Paleo-Hebrew and Neo-Assyrian scripts of the First and Early Second Temple period. But there is another tradition that I will describe in greater detail later. This tradition claims that the letters revealed at Sinai were geometric in nature. It is this geometric property that provides the essence of my proposal. It is the combination and configuration of these Hebrew letters translated into their geometric and numerical symbols that when combined according to the letter sequences of the Genesis text reveal their hidden secrets. And as the geometric symbols combine in the patterns prescribed by the Genesis text, they form mathematical statements which direct the organization and form the architecture of creation. How this incredible process unfolds is the topic of this lecture and those that follow. The hidden secrets of creation, according to the mystical tradition, are revealed by combining the three interlocking pieces of this Genesis puzzle. The three conceptual components can be described as follows. 1. The Hebrew letters represent geometric patterns or symbols in addition to the well-known numerical values. 2. The Genesis passage is constructed as a steganographic text in which the textual sequence of letters are arranged in a pattern that produces meaningful scientific statements when the letters are converted into their geometric symbols and numerical values and three, the geometric letter symbols and the Genesis passage embed in a geometric model that converts the phonetic letter symbols and the prosaic Genesis text into a series of meaningful scientific statements about creation. These three components, one, the geometric letter patterns, two, the geometric textual patterns, and three, the geometric model combine to reveal the hidden steganographic structure of the Genesis text. With these points in mind, it seems likely that the author of the Sefi Yetzirah was either aware of or participated in the construction of this geometric letter system and the textual letter sequences that comprise the Genesis passage. And with this knowledge of the letters and text, the author of the Sefi Yetzirah constructed a set of clues and directions to assemble the geometric model in which the letters and text embed. The author of the Sefi Yetzira text designed the document as a primer or guidebook. The resulting mysterious and cryptic passages are designed to aid the mystic seeker construct the geometrical model in which the letters and Genesis text embed to reveal the hidden secrets of creation alluded to in the mystical literature. The resulting discovery of these mystical secrets would produce the mystical epiphany so cherished by the mystical seekers. The secrets contained within this Genesis passage have remained buried and hidden for over 2,500 years. We will for the first time in modern history demonstrate an intri intricately layered and densely packed system of mathematical content 
embedded in the Genesis passage. We will start here with a basic introduction to the Sapiot Sira, the gateway to these mystical secrets. The Sapiot Sira, or Book of Formation, is among the earliest Kabbalistic or mystical compositions. The original text has been corrupted over time, and several slightly different variations ranging in length have emerged over history. The earliest written references to this cryptic text date back before 600 AD, but the text and its contents are no doubt much older, and like other mystical traditions, were passed down orally from mystic to mystic, generation after generation. In many respects, the content and transmission of the Sapiot Sira bears many similarities with the content and transmission of the cosmological components of Pythagorean mysticism and Platonic idealism that date back to the 5th century BC. The degree to which the Sapiot Sira development was influenced by Greek knowledge and the assimilation of Greek cosmology, geography, cartography, and geometry will be discussed in greater detail later. For now, we will focus on the rabbinic perspective, which claims that the transmission of the Sapiot Sira wisdom dates back to the patriarch Abraham, and that its transmission parallels the Torah, and together reveal the embedded secrets of creation contained within the Genesis text. Here we present three more passages. The Sapiot Sira focuses on the 22 letters as the foundation letters, with which he engraves, carves, permutes, weighs, transforms, and in so doing, depicts all that was formed and all that would be formed. But the author also emphasizes that with these 22 letters in a circle, repeating in a cycle and permuted one with the other, they take the form of a wall with 231 gates. To some mystics, the Sapiot Sira is assumed to be providing the directions for a mental exercise or meditation. The Sapiot Sira writes that the letters are engraved like a sort of garden, carved like a sort of wall, and covered like a sort of ceiling. The initiate to the practices of mysticism must contemplate the ground, carve the letters into a circle, and construct a wall. One Kabbalist, Rabbi Isaac of Akko, would meditate and imagine the letters out on the horizon. But clearly, there is more going on here. The emphasis on the 231 gates is a very important clue, because if one were to permute each letter with the other and graphically represent the process by constructing a circle with 22 letters that are combined by lines pairing all the combinations of letters, the result will be a circle with 231 connecting lines or paired gates. 22 letters in a circle. 231 lines or paired gates. The Sapiot Sira has directed the mystical initiate to construct this structure illustrated here, while imagining himself in the center surrounded by a wall that he has carved and a ceiling with which he is covered. The dome viewed from the side can here represent the heavens or celestial dome as experienced by a human observer here standing at the center. The human observer stands at the origin of an orthogonal coordinate system with two perpendicular ground axes running north-south and another east-west. In addition to the ground axes of the earth or water surface plane is another axis that extends into the heavens above and the depths below. A more complete model now emerges as we imagine our human observer at the center of his celestial dome and as he stands on the earth-water globe. This dome-on-dome -dome or sphere-on-sphere -sphere model will form the foundation on which we will embed the mystical Hebrew letters. This embedding process will serve two purposes. First, as we embed the individual letters onto our sphere-on-sphere -sphere model, the geometric properties of each individual letter will become apparent. And second, as we embed the Genesis passage onto the same model, it will become evident that the textual sequences transform into mathematical statements about creation. 
The Jewish tradition claims that the five books of Moses, or Torah, was presented to the ancient Hebrews through divine revelation. Within this tradition, it has been claimed that God dictated the revealed word as Moses wrote, suggesting that the revelation was auditory in nature. But another tradition also claims that Moses copied the text from a primordial Torah, suggesting a visual revelation. In any case, regardless of the original source, the tradition also claims that the original letters of the Torah and Ten Commandment tablets were of a special divine nature and not the Paleo-Hebrew letters of ancient Torah scroll documents that preceded the Babylonian exile. The claim that the letters were geometric in form is based on a tradition that historically can be traced back over two millennia. According to many scholars, most notably according to Rabbi Sadia ben Joseph, known to the Jewish people as the Sadia Gon, the letters were revealed in a geometric form based on his interpretation of the Sefer Yitzira. Here we see two passages from his commentary on the Sefer Yitzira. Within these passages, he claims that the letters appeared in Revelation in geometrical form, some oblong, some combined circle and square, others circle and triangle. Some are composed of superimposed spheres, and still others interpenetrating spheres. He further emphasizes that the letters all appeared as types of whirlwinds, suggesting a dynamic spinning property. The point to remember is that the claim that the letters are originally geometric in form, that they have a higher dimensional spherical nature, and that they have a dynamic spinning quality, is an ancient claim that parallels the transmission of the Torah itself. Over the last 2,000 years, many rabbinic scholars have repeatedly acknowledged the existence of a lost system of letter shapes and forms which convey the hidden wisdom of the Torah. Here we present a passage from a highly respected rabbinic authority. Rabbi Moses ben Nachman, known to the Orthodox Jewish world as the Ramban, writes in his book, Commentary on the Torah. Now everything that was transmitted to our teacher Moses concerning these portals of wisdom, all was written in the Torah explicitly or by allusion, through certain words, either through gematrios or the forms of the letters, when they are written normally or in an unusual form, such as the winding letters and the crooked letters, and others like them. References from other authoritative rabbinic scholars, such as the Chassam Sofer and Rabbi Moses ben Maimon, known to the Orthodox Jewish world as the Rambam, and to others as Maimonides, further confirm the existence of these unusually written letters that are no longer found in today's Torah scrolls. To understand how the Hebrew letters can function in the manner that the mystics have described and mathematically describe creation, it is necessary to appreciate the unconventional properties that the Hebrew alphabet has assumed over time. The Hebrew letter system is unique among the letter systems of the world. The letters convey several levels of information. On one level, they are phonetic symbols that are used to reconstruct an archive of the spoken language of the people. On a second level, the letter symbols are numbers that convey numerical information. On a third level, the letters form, by tradition, convey pictographic information. The Jewish mystical tradition, however, suggests that this pictographic property includes a geometric quality. And it is this geometric quality that explains how a conventional poetic text can transform into a formula for cosmic creation. Consider the conventional manner in which the Hebrew letter system, or for that matter, any letter system, is envisioned in the mind's eye flat figures on a flat paper or papyrus surface, as we illustrate here. In this form, they represent the phonetic symbols from which we build language, and in this written form construct words, sentences, and passages that allow us to construct an archive of the spoken interaction between two minds communicating in the same language. The Sefiyat Sira, according to the Sadia Gon, is revealing to us the transformation of these flat two-dimensional letters into a higher dimensional realm 
where they acquire a new level of geometric meaning, forming part of a mathematical symbolic language system, which in theory should be universally recognizable to any mind familiar with mathematics and geometry. In this slide, we can now visualize the very same letters that were presented in the previous slide, but now they appear in relation to the higher dimensional sphere in which they are embedded. They now take on new properties by spinning, tracing, carving, and permuting into new forms, and in so doing, acquire geometrical meaning. As two-dimensional structures on the flat plane of paper, they represented phonetic symbols that compile to form words that tell a story. Now, however, as forms embedded in the higher dimensional space of the sphere-on-sphere -sphere model generated by the Sefer Yetzira, they have meaning as geometric symbols that tell another story. Maybe not a different story, but a deeper story. A mathematical story about the very same concepts that the prosaic word text is describing. The mystical tradition claims that the letters of the Torah or Hebrew Bible were revealed as one continuous string of letters. And because the letters appeared with no spacing or punctuation, the tradition also claims that they can be parsed in many different ways to generate multiple layers of meaning. Later in this presentation, we will describe how this amazing transformation unfolds. But first, we must discuss the history and evolution of the Hebrew alphabet and where this geometric letter system fits into this history. And second, we must describe how the Sapiot Sira provides the clues to recognize the geometric properties of these letters. Alphabets morph and evolve over time. As the alphabet system spread through the ancient world, nations and civilizations produced their own variations in form and style. For the most part, they all remained 20 to 30 letter systems. The earliest systems, like the Proto-Canaanite, Venetian, Paleo-Hebrew, and Neo-Assyrian alphabets, remained consonantal systems. That is, all the letters were consonants, no vowels. However, with the transmission of the Phoenician alphabet to the Greeks and Europeans, vowel letters were added to the system. In this slide, we can see that the Paleo-Hebrew, or Old Hebrew alphabet, is derived from the Phoenician script whereas the later Jewish scripts, such as today's block and cursive Hebrew letters, come from the later Aramaic or Neo-Assyrian alphabets. In this slide, we see an example of Neo-Assyrian writing from the Dead Sea Scroll collection of documents, which were recovered in 1948 from the caves of Qumrun in the Judean desert. Hundreds of documents and document fragments have been recovered. A significant percentage of these documents originated from sacred biblical scrolls, and the vast majority of these texts, which date from 300 BC to 100 AD, are written in Neo-Assyrian and Jewish scripts. In this slide, we see several examples of Hebrew and Jewish alphabets used throughout the 3500 years of Jewish history. From a historical perspective, the earliest Hebrew alphabet was the Ivrit, or Paleo-Hebrew script, which was used during the First Temple period. The Neo-Assyrian alphabet replaced Ivrit during the early Second Temple period. After Alexander the Great conquered the Persian Empire in 322 BC, the Jewish kingdom of the late Second Temple period developed its own unique Jewish style, which evolved from the earlier Neo-Assyrian alphabet. To summarize, we have three alphabets, the Paleo-Hebrew, the Neo-Assyrian, and the Jewish alphabets, such as the Block Hebrew and Sanserif styles that are illustrated here. But according to the mystical literature, there exists a fourth important alphabetic system, which has been lost over time, but is alluded to in the Sapiot Sira and many other rabbinical sources. This alphabet is the geometric letter system that is used according to the mystical tradition to construct the cosmos, presumably by obeying the textual patterns in the Genesis text. The question is, where does this alphabet fit into the historical evolution of Hebrew and Jewish alphabets? 
Is it the oldest of alphabets, as the rabbis claim, created by God as part of a cosmic DNA that provides with the Genesis text a prescription for the creation of the universe? Or is it a later invention, a rabbinic fabrication devised during the early Second Temple period, along with the beginning passage of Genesis, to generate a system of Jewish letter mysticism, to diffuse the Samaritan claims that the Paleo-Hebrew letters are the authentic letters of Revelation? In either case, the later Jewish alphabets, such as the block Hebrew of the Masoretic scribes and the Sanseri style of common usage, would represent modifications based on combining features of the earlier Neo-Assyrian alphabets of the Persian Empire with the geometric letter system either revealed or invented during the time of Ezra the scribe. So which is it? Are the geometric letters of Jewish mysticism the result of divine revelation or are they the result of rabbinic fabrication? In this slide, we propose the geometric letter system that represents the best fit for the Sefi Yetzirah clues and the best fit for insertion into the Genesis passage. You will also notice that the geometric forms closely and generically resemble the conventional Hebrew letter. We illustrate here 18 of the 22 different letter forms that appear in the first passage of the Genesis text. These 18 letters account for 188 of the 197 letters that comprise the Day 1 Genesis passage. The other four letters will be presented later. Each letter is displayed alongside the geometric variant that is inserted into the double sphere model. As mentioned earlier, the geometric variant is a thinly disguised variation of the corresponding Ashurit or modern Hebrew letter. These letters comprise the cipher key to reveal the hidden content in the Genesis text. The geometric properties of these letter symbols will be more clearly described as we insert the symbols into the words and phrases of the Genesis passage. On a prosaic level, the letters assemble to form words and passages that convey a poetic description of creation. But on a deeper level, the letters as geometric symbols assemble to form mathematical statements that describe features of cosmic creation that are not only scientifically accurate but also consistent with the poetic text. The poetic Genesis text, which represents an encrypted cipher text, along with the cryptic passages from the Sefi Yetzirah, provide an interlocking system of clues and prompts to decipher the Genesis text into a compact and layered series of mathematical and geometric plain text statements. These equations and algorithms represent fundamental structures and fundamental properties that are intrinsic to an understanding of the organization of space, time, and the fabric of cosmic creation. As we described earlier, revealing the hidden mathematical message in the Genesis text requires the application of the three components of this Genesis puzzle. The first component is the sphere-on-sphere -sphere model, which on its simplest level represents a celestial dome on an Earth-water globe. But the Sapiot Sira is providing the clues to construct more than just a physical model. And as we will demonstrate in the next section of this presentation, the Sapiot Sira is also providing clues and instructions to transform the Hebrew letters into geometric symbols, which can be embedded in the spherical model. This geometric letter system represents the second component of this puzzle. And the letters as geometric symbols now can be assembled into geometric pictures or pictograms that are based on the Hebrew words that appear in the Genesis text. We will provide multiple examples of these geometric letter pictograms that through their meaningful and consistent application confirm the correspondence between the letter and its geometric interpretation. Now with the geometric letter symbols and the spherical model in which they embed we can discover and appreciate the third component of this Genesis puzzle. As we embed and string together the geometric letter symbols into our physical sphere model, it becomes apparent that the sequence of letter symbols that constitute the first passage of Genesis construct a series of sophisticated mathematical messages 
that describe important features of creation. These sequences of geometric symbols form mathematical statements that represent equations and algorithms that describe important properties of creation. It is important to note that according to the mystical tradition, the letter symbols can represent numerical values as well as geometric symbols. And further, according to these same mystical traditions, the letters of the Genesis text were revealed as one long, unparsed string of letters, with no vowels and no punctuation. The letter string sequences can therefore be parsed and interpreted in many different ways, and in fact multiple meaningful and scientifically consistent readings are often generated. The mathematical statements take the form of equations and algorithms. In this slide, for example, the first 14 letters of unparsed Genesis text are parsed first into poetic form of the text and then underneath parsed and interpreted as mathematical equations. Operator signs such as plus signs, minus signs, and equal signs are not contained within the text and are implied. The fact that these equation signs are not fixed and predetermined allow the text sequence to be interpreted in multiple arrangements and in fact multiple scientifically relevant and meaningful equations do indeed result. This slide, for example, was presented at a poster presentation in 2006 at a conference of Jewish scientists at Florida International University. An elderly gentleman studied it for a few seconds and as I proceeded to interpret each letter, he interrupted and said, yes, I see, this is the time dilation equation for the Lorentz transform. If you don't recognize the pattern, do not be concerned. I will explain it in greater detail later. The elderly gentleman, it turns out, taught college-level physics and readily recognized the pattern after being introduced to the geometric notation system. The Sefi Yetzirah describes the 22 letters as the foundation letters because it is through these letters that the universe was created. But the Sefi Yetzirah also directs special attention to three letters that have special geometric and structural significance. These three letters are the Mem, Aleph, and Shin, which the Sefi Yetzirah calls the mother letters. We start with the letter Mem, below, which the Sefi Yetzirah claims rules over water. The letter Mem is one quarter of a section through the water globe sphere and as the Sadia Gon describes in his commentary on the Sefi Yetzirah, when the letter Mem spins on its axis like a whirlwind, it traces the earth-water hemisphere alluded to in the Sefi Yetzirah passages. Next we focus on the letter Shin above, which rules over fire and from which heaven arises. The Sefi Yetzirah uses the abdomen, chest, head, as well as the hot, temperate, cold analogy to establish a topological arrangement to the mother letters and the geometric structures they represent. Like the head, the shin embedded in the celestial dome sits on top of the water globe. The letter shin then geometrically represents the three axis coordinate grid of the three dimensional space contained within the celestial dome. In the middle, like the chest, is the olive which rules over wind and which flows and circulates between the water below and the heavens above. The olive geometrically represents the surface two-axis coordinate grid that is the interface between the curved two-dimensional water globe surface below and the three-dimensional celestial dome space above. Keep these geometric and pictorial components in mind as we proceed through our analysis of the Sapiot Sierra passages and as we assemble these components into larger and more complex constructions. In this slide, we see the three mother letters to the right graphically paired with the three great name letters to the left. The Mem Aleph Shin provide the structural architecture and topological orientation for the double sphere or dome on globe model, while the Yud Vav He provide like the letter Shin 
the three-dimensional architecture of the celestial sphere component of the system. Since we are solving a geometric riddle and attempting to assemble pieces of a pictographic puzzle, our confidence in the validity of our letter symbol substitution will strengthen as we consistently add more geometric elements to the puzzle. Here the Sapiotsera informs us that the three additional letters taken from the great name are closely associated with the three mother letters. The four-letter Tetragrammaton is the great name of God and it consists of three different letters, the Yud, Vav, and He. And these three letters are connected with the three mother letters, Mem, Aleph, Shin, respectively. The smallest of the Hebrew letters is the letter Yud, which is associated with the letter Mem from Mayim. In that case, the node like Yud is pictographically compared to a small island on the water globe. But the, no, but the node like Yud can also be associated with the heavens or celestial dome resting above the water globe. In this case, the Yud can pictographically represent a small flame at the center of the three-dimensional space represented by the Shin. Remember that the Shin rules over fire and when combined with the letter Aleph in the middle, constructs the word Aish, which means fire. Now the Sapi represents the letter He, paired with the letter Shin, and the fire of Shin is bounded by the spherical surface of the He, constructing a heavenly dome that is consistent with the Sapi which states that from fire comes heaven. The celestial dome has the Yud fire flame in the center and is bounded by the He dome surface. Finally, between the Yud flame and the heaven's boundary is the letter Vav, which we will describe in greater detail later. On the right side of the slide, we pictographically and geometrically represent the mother letters Mem, Aleph, Shin, paired with their respective great name letters Yud, Vav, He. These paired letter symbols can now be correlated with the pictographic constructions on the left, where we pictographically and geometrically represent the components of the Domon Sphere model that are associated with each of the mother letters. Associated with the Mem on the left is the Mem Yud Mem Sophit construction or Mayim water. On top, associated with the Shin, is the Aleph Shin construction or Aish fire. And in the middle, associated with the Aleph, is the Reish Vav Chet construction or ruach wind the words mayim ruach and aish are letter combinations that appear in the genesis text and therefore it should be no surprise that their letters form meaningful pictographic constructions for example the aleph shin combination forms the word aish or fire and it is comprised of the three-dimensional coordinate grid of the celestial dome topologically embedded on the Aleph or two-dimensional coordinate grid of the Earth globe surface. And further, the Sapiotsira suggests that the Shin is paired with the letter He. The He itself consists of the Yud-like flame of fire Aish at its center with an additional curved arc-like component. This arc-like component forms the boundary of the cosmic dome or heavens. And consequently, the Sapiotsira says that Shin rules over fire, and from Aish fire comes Shamayim heavens. Let us consider a second example. The Mem is paired with the letter Yud, and further, the letter Mem rules over Mayim water, which is spelled Mem Yud Mem Sophit. The Mem Sophit is the final letter form for the letter Mem. Some Hebrew letters take on a different form when they occur at the end of the word. The word Mayim water constructs a local grid region on the water globe surface. The Yud sits like a small island on the Mem water globe. But the Yud island also represents the anchor point at the Aleph origin for the rectangular final Mem Sophit. Interestingly, the Aleph and Yud combine to form the word E, which means island. Together the letters Mem, Yud, and Mem Sophit combine to construct a box-like local mesh region with the Yud anchor at the origin of the mesh-like global grid system. Representing grid systems on global surfaces 
is essential to Cartesian style map construction and Gaussian style curvature analysis. Later we will analyze the word ruach, wind, and as we do so, it will become increasingly obvious that these pictographic qualities and that these geometric properties are no coincidence, but that they are intentionally and intelligently designed to convey additional levels of meaning to the spoken language and written text of Genesis. Throughout history, man has struggled to understand his place in the cosmos. The ancient Greeks were among the first people to pursue a rational, observationally based analysis of the world around them. And prior to the 5th century BC, their world view would have looked like the diagram illustrated here. By the 2nd century BC, Greek philosophers and enlightened thinkers were aware that the earth was a spherical globe of land and water. One might suspect that the author of the Sapiotsira may have assimilated these concepts into the construction of his celestial dome on water globe model. As the diagram illustrates, water Mayim and earth Aretz are below. Fire Aish and heaven Shemayim are pictured above, and in the middle, between the water below and the heavenly fires above, is the air and wind. This topological water-air-fire model that first appears in the ancient Greek literature is an important recurring theme in the Sapiotsira. In this passage, the Sapiotsira states, Mayim water is below, Aish fire is above, and Avir air from Ruach wind decides between them. Whether or not the Sapiotsira is borrowing and assimilating Greek knowledge or presenting information that even predates the Greeks, it is nevertheless obvious that the Sapiotsira is doing much more. The author of the Sapiotsira is taking the cosmological model and representing it as an abstract geometric notation system derived from the Hebrew alphabet. On a conventional and superficial level, letters as phonetic symbols combine into words that evoke a mental image. Mem Yud and Mem Sophit combine to form Mayim, which means water. Aleph and Shin combine to form Aish, which means fire. And Aleph, Vav, Yud and Resh combine to form Avir, which means air. But at the same time that the letters as phonetic symbols are combining to form words, we propose that the letters as geometric symbols are combining to form geometric pictograms or pictures that convey important properties of the phonetically constructed word. The letters, then, become geometric symbols, and like any symbolic language system, whether it be a spoken language system or an abstract mathematical system, the symbols will combine to form higher order concepts in an ascending hierarchy of meaning. Letters are combined into words. Words are combined into sentences. Sentences are combined into passages, and so on. A similar parallel process is going on with the geometric symbol structure. At the same time that the letters join to form words and sentences that evoke mental images of these word concepts, the geometric attribute and properties of the letters are being combined to form the deeper mathematical structure of these concepts. Several examples of this parallel surface prose versus deep math architecture are provided by the Sefer Yitzira text. Aish fire is above, Mayim water is below, and Avir air decides between them. In this case, the Avir air decides according to the Aish fire above. At the Aleph origin, the Vav air wind vector points towards the Yud, which in this case represents the flame of the Aish fire. The Vav vector flows along the Resh geodesic curve, completing the Avir pictogram. As the Sefi Yitzira declares, the Shin rules over the Aish fire, which represents the celestial dome component 
of the dome on sphere model. And at the center of this heavenly or celestial dome is the Yud flame, which is also the central component of the letter He. As we already described, the letter He is paired with the letter Shin, and as we will see in the next slide, the He on Shin assembly completes the celestial heaven dome pictogram. The geometric letter symbols are fitting together like pieces of an abstract jigsaw puzzle. The Shin topologically sits on top of the Aleph. It combines with the Aleph and forms the word Aish, fire. And as the Seyf Yitzira declares, the Shin rules over fire. But the Seyf Yitzira also declares that Heaven Shemayim was created from fire. Here we geometrically illustrate the Hebrew word Shemayim, Heaven. On the bottom is the Mayim water construction with the letters Mem, Yud, Mem Sofit constructing a local grid region or manifold on the Mayim water globe surface. On the top we see the three-dimensional coordinate axis system represented by the three arms of the Shin. The Shin above with the Mayim below construct the Hebrew word Shamayim Heavens. But the Seyf Yitzira pairs the letter He, which here represents a wavefront, with the letter Shin, forming the word Hashamayim, or the Heavens. It is this word, Hashamayim, that appears in the first line of Genesis. Whereas the He of Hamayim, the waters, represents a wavefront advancing over the horizontal Mayim water surface, here, in contrast, we orient the Hay wavefronts so that they advance in the planes perpendicular to the horizontal water surface. By rotating these Hay structures around the vertical Y axis, we circumscribe the Shin three-dimensional space and construct the heavenly celestial dome. We will later see that the Hay and Memsofit in the word to home which m translates the depths or the deep, also refer to these vertical planes, whereas the He in Haaretz, as the He in Hamayim, refer to the wavefront in the horizontal earth water plane. We have already described how the letters Yud, Vav, and He from God's great name are paired with the three mother letters Mem, Aleph, and Shin. Now we focus in greater detail on what the Seyf Yitzira has to say about the Yud Vav He construction. The Seyf Yitzira declares that the Yud Vav and He are set into God's great name and with them he sealed six extremities. But before we begin to interpret this statement, we should note the obvious resemblance of the Yud Vav and He to the geometric equivalents of a point, ray, and wavefront which is illustrated in the next slide in a diagram taken from a college physics book. Here we see three symbols commonly used in geometry and physics. At the center is the geometric point. In this case it has physical significance as the origin and source of a disturbance that propagates outward as an advancing wavefront that is here physically represented as a circle or arc. The arrow, which originates at the central point, moves outward with the advancing wavefront and represents a vector quantity, which indicates the direction and velocity of the advancing wavefront. In the 18th century, Rabbi Elijah ben Solomon, also known as the Vilna Gaon, or genius of Vilna, used the diagram illustrated here to explain the Yudvav He construction suggested by these mystical verses from the Sefer Yitzira. Using the Vilna Gaon's coordinate axis system, it is obvious that the directions provided by the Sefer Yitzira in the text presented here are describing a three-dimensional coordinate axis system with man the observer at the central origin of this reference system. And as we described earlier, also at the center of this spherical system is the central Yud flame from which the heavenly celestial dome emanates. 
The Yud Vav He, according to this interpretation of the Sefer Yitzira, represents three-dimensional space, which is also represented by the letter Shin. And the letter Shin, according to the Sefer Yitzira, rules over fire. And from fire comes the heavens, or celestial spheres. If we look carefully at this passage, we can see that the diagram on the left perfectly describes the contents of this passage. With our little man standing on his little Yud island, we see that the Vav is sealed above as he looks upward. The Vav is sealed below as he looks downward. The Vav is sealed in the east as he faces straight ahead, and so on. The Yud, He, and Vav, according to the Sefi Yitzira, are creating a holy space extending out in six extremities from our little observer man in the center. Our little man stands on his little island by the covenantal flame, which is symbolically at the center of God's great holy name, which encompasses the entire realm of our man's experiential universe. Our little observer man stands at the center of a great heavenly sphere, which is defined and sealed by the letters and by the geometry of God's great name. We now depict the four-letter great name, the Tetragrammaton, the holiest of God's names. And from the clues provided by the Sefi Yitzira, we also now suspect that the great name is associated with the properties of light and energy, and that from the light and energy the heavens and everything contained within are created. We suspect that the hay represents a wavefront, and now can ask, why does the great name contain two hays? We have noted earlier that the great name does not appear in the first passage of Genesis, whereas the Elohim name, spelled with five letters, Aleph, Lamed, He, Yud, Mem, Sophit, appears six times. Here we have the five-letter Elohim name depicted in four double-sphere figures. The first two letters, Aleph, Lamed, are in the first figure and spells L which means towards. The remaining three figures, He, Yud, Mem, Sophit, spell Hayam, to the sea. The Lamed is a wave moving outwards towards the sea. In this case, the Aleph represents the coordinate axes for the vertical plane, and the Lamed wave is embedded in this vertical plane. This configuration, with the wave displacement vertical to the horizontal water plane, is consistent with an earth water globe model. In this slide, however, the orientation of the wave is now rotated 90 degrees and the direction of wave displacement is perpendicular to the vertical plane. The Heyud Memsofit plane in this configuration is perpendicular to the water surface and extends into the heavens above and extends into the depths below. We are suggesting that the four-letter tetragrammaton represents a unity that is formed by combining and merging the two mutually perpendicular Elohim Lamed ways, which are embedded in the two mutually perpendicular Heyud Memsofit planes. And again, it should come as no surprise that light can be likewise modeled as a unity that results from the interlocking relationship of an electric and magnetic wave displacement in two mutually perpendicular field planes. A more precise description of this mechanism will be extracted later from the first Genesis passage. Meanwhile, we should note that this mutually perpendicular double wave system can be rotated off the horizontal water plane and into the vertical Shamayim heavens and to home depth planes. Let us back up for a moment and note that as our geometric analysis of the Sefi Yitzira unfolded, we presented key words from the first passage of Genesis to illustrate the system. If you remember, Shin represents Esh fire, and from Esh fire, Shamayim heaven is created. Mem represents Mayim water, and from Mayim water, Aretz earth is created. All these Hebrew letter combinations appear in the first passage of Genesis. 
The problem is that the Sefer Yetzirah also says, Aleph is Ruach, wind, and from Ruach wind, Avir air is created. Although the word Ruach wind does indeed appear in the first passage, the word Avir air, however, is nowhere to be found. The solution to this problem is that the Avir air reference, as well as the heavenly dome on water sphere model, is really a metaphor for a deeper, more physically relevant model. The deeper geometric analysis for the Avir air construction is revealed by the most famous phrase from the Genesis passage, Vayomer Elohim Yehi Or Vayehi Or, and God said, Yehi Or, let there be light, Vayehi Or, and there was light. In this slide, we see the six-letter sequence Yehi Or, Yud He Yud Yehi, Aleph Vav Resh Or. Yehi or, let there be light. With the He letter included, we can see that the statement is basically the Avir algorithm, but now instead of a wind of air flowing as a Vav vector over the earth water surface, we see a flame giving off a wavefront of light with a small point like spinning loop of light oriented on the advancing spherical wavefront surface. This advancing particle wavefront combination starts from the Aleph origin and moving according to the Vav vector, in this case the speed of light, over the curved race geodesic of space. Whereas wind and air move smoothly on the curved surface of the Earth, the same cannot be said of light. Clearly, the heaven-earth double sphere model is only a metaphor for a deeper, higher dimensional, spherically curved space model. Here we have the first six letters of Genesis, Bereshit, in the beginning. And as we mentioned earlier, parsing and doubling the middle Aleph and Shin yields Bara'esh Sheet, he created a thorn of fire, or he created a pit of fire. But we are more concerned with converting the letters into their geometric and numeric symbols and see what we come up with. Here we parse the six letters into four double sphere figures. The first figure represents the Beit Resh Aleph algorithm, which we introduced earlier. Beit, or two Resh geodesic or great circle curves, intersect and establish the Aleph origin for our curved two-axis surface coordinate system. The second double sphere figure presents the Aleph and embeds the Shin on top, creating the word H and expanding the local two-dimensional manifold into a three-dimensional space. In the third double sphere figure, we introduce the Yud point-like fire particle. We could place the Yud flame at the Aleph origin, as we have done earlier in the presentation, but in this case, we put it in the Shin three-dimensional space for reasons that will soon become obvious. And finally, in the fourth double sphere figure, we place the Yud point-like particle on the top, which conveys both rectangular and polar coordinate information. This will all become clearer and make more sense as we continue through the letter embedding process. Here we add the next two words of the Genesis text, Bara Elohim, God created. We have juxtaposed the Bara Elohim construction underneath the Bereshit construction so that by comparing the paired figures, the viewer can get a better sense of how the letter symbols correlate with each other during the embedding process. For example, the Beit Resh Aleph in the two figures indicates that the text is referring to the same point location. In the second set of figures, the Aleph Shin, H Fire Space Construction, pairs with the Aleph Lamid L Advancing Wave Construction. The figures suggest the waves of fire and light fill the H space. In the third set of figures, we pair the Shin Yud with the He Yud. The Shin He pairing we encountered earlier, and as described earlier, constructs the celestial dome of our dome on sphere model. But here more specifically suggests an advancing sphere of light with a point-like particle 
situated on its spherical surface. Finally, in the fourth set of figures, the Yud Tav is juxtaposed with the Mem Sophi, which as described earlier identifies its coordinate location within the vertical plane of rectangular and polar coordinate systems. Here in the fourth double sphere figure, it is interesting to note that if we replace the Yud in the upper double sphere figure with the other two great name letters, the He and the Vav, we generate the word to home, which means the depth or the deep, and refers to the rotation of the vav light vector within the vertical plane. This slide again depicts eight double sphere panels that embed the fourteen letters of Breshit Bara Elohim. But there are two subtle changes in two of the top panels. Have you noticed the two changes? And if you have noticed the changes, do you have any idea why they might be important? If you haven't noticed, the shin in the second upper panel of Breshit has moved from the origin to a new location. And in the next panel, though the Yud has not moved, it is now depicted in relation to the now dislocated shin space. So what is going on here, and why is it important? To appreciate why this simple translocation is significant, we will need to present and explain the light clock experiment illustrated here. A full discussion will be presented in the next presentation, but for now it is important to recognize two important principles. The first is the invariance principle. That is, the laws and physical constants of the universe do not change from one observational reference frame to another. And the second principle is the universal constancy of the speed of light. That is, the speed of light also does not change from one reference frame to another. On the bottom right side of the slide, we depict a little man with a light clock running very fast towards our stationary observer standing at the origin. As the moving man and clock pass the stationary man, a flash of light at the bottom of the light clock sends a pulse of light up towards the detector on the top of the clock. As the pulse moves upward in the clock, our little moving man moves away from the origin as depicted in the top figure. On the left side of the slide, the experiment is, de is depicted in our geometric notation. On the bottom, our moving shin spatial reference frame is moving towards the fixed Aleph origin. As the moving shin space coincides with the Aleph fixed origin, the letters symbolically combine and form Aleph shin or Aish fire. And in the third top figure, the moving shin reference space moves to a distant coordinate position in relation to the Aleph origin as a yud light particle moves up the y or vertical axis of the moving shin coordinate space. The obvious problem is that the stationary man sees the particle of light move a different distance in his spatial reference system than our moving man with the light clock. This is impossible if the speed of light is constant and the two observers experience the same amount of passing time. So which is it? Does the speed of light obey Galilean relativity and change relative to the moving reference frame? Or is the speed of light the same in every reference frame regardless of motion? And it is the passage of time that changes from frame to frame. If you don't already know the answer, you will have to wait until our next presentation or ask your local physicist. But before we delve deeper, into the physical significance of these geometric letter constructions, let us first focus on the configuration of these letters within our double sphere model. You will notice that the fixed Aleph surface coordinate position, the moving shin reference frame, and the Yud light particle construct a Pythagorean right triangle within the celestial dome component of our dome on Earth sphere model. And in this slide, we plot all 14 letters of Bereshit Bara Elohim into four double sphere figures demonstrating the construction of the same Pythagorean right triangle, but now embedded in the complete dome on sphere model. Notice that the Aleph of Beit Resh Aleph, the Shin, and the Yud form the vertex points of the right triangle. This triangle consists of three line segments. 
the Beit Resh Aleph to Shin component and the Shin to Yud Tav component form the two short segments of the triangle. The Aleph of Beit Resh Aleph is connected to the Yud of God's Elohim name by the Lamed wave and this segment forms the third segment which represents the hypotenuse of the right triangle. The letter Beit, which is equivalent to the numerical value of 2, is positioned precisely within the phrase to complete the Pythagorean equation for a right triangle provided you assume the bait numeral represents an exponent and the operation signs are inserted as indicated. In the second part of this introductory presentation we will further elaborate on this surprising configuration and present further evidence that this pattern is no coincidence but the deliberate an intelligently designed intent of the author of these geometric letters and the amazing Genesis passage in which the letters embed.